so we are at floor joist level. Hello, Reggie. So at the minute, we're just loading up for uh, block work. Blocks above these steels got to go in. I'm going to have to put some floor joist in there. All the shuttering that we used for the footings has been brought up here and screwed down and we're using that just as a platform to work off. We brought up little bits of block work in between all the joists and yeah like I said we are loading out to build the block work upstairs. But it gives us a good opportunity to inspect the masonry look at the lichens on the window so yeah look at the state of this stuff all this mastic's failed around here brickwork massive holes in the brickwork look at that There's another big hole up there um, not very good at all really there's an air brick here for the bathroom um, but there's nothing on the inside old pipe sticking out there and all the pointing is gone out of those bricks up there so I suppose it's a good job we're doing it really eh? but I can't believe how messy some of this is no lintels as well so this window's coming out anyway this window's coming out and all the brickwork to the edge here all the way up can potentially come out and then we've got off of here onto there is two steels running across to carry the brickwork and the loft uh, what do you call it joists and then there'll be a steel coming out of there all this brickwork's coming out all this brickwork's coming out all this brickwork's coming out this window's coming out to here and we'll have a pillar running down there and that's what is going to take the joist so the joist will come off of that bearing there run all the way across to here and we've got a pad stone there to take the floor steel for the kitchen for the bedroom floor for these joists and then there'll be another one built in at this height along the top if that's making sense and look you can see the chickens waiting for some sunshine and you can see all the towels from work. Look at that lot, that's just like a few days from the kitchen at the brew shed. Crackers. <laughs> I thought before we put the scaffolding up, thanks Jem, I'll give you a bit of a tour around the extension and an update as to what we've done. How's that? Okay, we'll take the amber nectar with us, ignore the Thatcher's glass, I brought it home drunk a few months ago by accident. So, garden's still somewhat of a mess, but extension. As Reggie will tell you, is up to first floor and beyond. So you can see the wet bit on there. That's what I've done in the past couple of days. In fact, most of that I did today. A um, little bit on the side as well. That was done yesterday around there. You can see that section as it comes down into like a little bit of a V shape. Built this corner up first, obviously. Um, really been enjoying it but definitely have to go back to work I have been in to work a few times we brewed last week for instance when we had the frosty weather so uh, floors in these are the timber joists 
They're actually over spec. They're C24 rather than C16. And they're 170s by 48s. And it was spec'd out for 148s by 37s. So we're over and above um, what we need to be. These joists here have been pocket holed into the wall. But the reason I've not filled them all in, see I've not, these won't fill in either side with mortar, is because they'll be coming back out again. As there is a steel going to sit on behind that drain pipe there, and it's going to sit on this pad stone which I've built into the wall. And that's going to carry the floor joists that exist in the kitchen. Um, and then it's going to carry these new ones. So we'll just, we can't obviously put that steel in until the wall has come down. The wall all the way up to the roof has got to come down and the steel isn't specified to carry the weight of the wall. And obviously we wouldn't go through the hassle of putting it in before anyway. It's a waste of time. So we'll wait till we've got the roof on and then this can come down because obviously we need to be watertight, we need to have doors and windows in, all ready to go in the same time this comes down because we will then be um, living in the extension. So if I follow you, if, uh, if I follow the corridor down here to the front of the building, this is a pad stone which was specified by the structural engineer to carry these two steels which you saw us put in on I think perhaps the last episode or you saw some of it. That's the built cast in place pad stone, which I've initialed. And that went in um, as per the structural engineer's spec, a C25, C30 concrete mix with 10 mil rebar through the center. And then a little pad stone over there. There's a pad stone on the inside that needs rebuilding a little bit bigger than what it is. But we can't do that until this concrete lintel comes out. And I'm not taking that concrete lintel out until the door comes out. So again, it's one of those things where that needs doing first before we make any alterations. I've also cut into the side of the block work for the ventilation for what is going to be eventually the utility room here. And then this is going to be bathroom ventilation. So we've got bath and shower going in here downstairs. And that's the vent for it. Today I also put this block work and brickwork above this steel. Now uh, the reason I've gone and done all this up to kind of that height today, which is it's basically windowsill height upstairs, is because we've got all of the scaffolding going up over the next week or two if I just walk down the garden a little bit you can see on top of there we've got the brickwork bridging across which sits underneath that window bit of block work underneath it because that's not going to be seen uh, as that is where the wall plate for the lean-to roof on the front of the building will be going eventually and then if we have a look around this side we have the biggest wall I have ever built. So you can really see where these uh, odd bricks have been thrown into the wall when we were delivered the wrong batch. And by the time we really noticed they'd gone in. But I don't think it looks too bad. Nice little random pattern. But it's obvious when you get up there because it's completely bleak by that one there. But never mind. So we're up to that height. To give you an idea, that shed is around 10 foot high, eight foot high. So we're just a little bit over there. We've got starter strips on the wall up there, again, because that is going to be, um, a lot of that wall's gonna be removed uh, downstairs. We haven't cut for a vertical damp in that wall because it would weaken the structure. So, uh, the building control guy is happy for us to just do the vertical damps like that. So I'll zoom back out a little bit again. Nothing's really changed on the front. We're up to kind of that level. 
on uh, the last video I think so I think what I'll do is pop some ladders up and we'll go upstairs and have a look up there so this is where we are up the hatch if you like so this is upstairs this is the pike or gable end which will be all this will be removed along here actually and this section above from approximately this height or as tall as i can reach there's two steels going in across there to carry just that little top bit of the apex but quite frankly i think we can probably get rid of it not sure what's going on here i think that was an overflow pipe for a loft installed header tank which is no longer there um but it makes no difference because those bricks are coming out so this is the front this will be the front bathroom area there's a window going in here a couple of windows going in on the side uh, the window on the front wasn't actually on the architect's drawings but because it's just on the front i can't see it being a problem I'm going to wing it. If they don't like it, I'll break it up. But I need another window in the bathroom, so that's what's happening. <clears throat> and then down here, as of this section, from there to here, will be the um, bathroom door. As you walk in, the bathroom door will be that window. And then there'll be a partition wall here. And from here, all the way to that wall there, will be the new main bed. And that will be a big square like this so big enough i think it'll be the biggest one in the house probably about five meters square something like that four and a half meters square these are the two steels that have to go in on this section on the side there and then beneath it the big one is the steel that is going in up here which those two steels are bolted off of. And then the steel that is going to pick up the floor underneath here, that well, that, because that's going in there underneath, that's still down there and that's what, that's what those scaffolding boards are sat on. But this is where we're at. Um, so as you can see, the height of my leg, we're about three courses a block up from floor level upstairs and we've not got much to go quite frankly to bring us up to the finished height as to where we need to be so just waiting for the scaffolding to come next week those guys are going to run it along here almost the same height as that shed roof then i can jump back on the outside i can build all this side up and then uh, build the back up just had a bit of a phone call from the oil suppliers for the pub uh, so anyway, back to where we were. We've got a considerable amount of Kingspan insulation to go in, as you can see. It's in all in and around here. Now, somebody mentioned on one of the comments recently about it doesn't look like we have a lot of insulation in the walls. Now, a lot of people might be familiar with either the rock wall insulation, where I think normally the regulations require you to have approximately 150 millimetres of rock wall insulation these days. Um, or usually you'd have a 150 mil cavity and maybe a 100 mil um, of some type of, of king span in there. But because we are limited to the space of cavity that we can have on this particular build, what's happened is um, the architect has specced out a, a Kelvin's per... Um, square meter I think it is of heat loss so I think where we have to be at or around 0 0.18 kelvins per meter I'm sure it, I'll put it on the screen anyway of heat loss to be within the current building regulations which changed actually late 2022 early 2023 which is why We've managed to just get away with this 50 mil Kingspan Therma board. Now, the architect initially wanted us to put 100 mil board in there and have no airspace whatsoever. 
which would have been quite difficult for me to do um, because of the snots on the back of the brickwork and whatnot. As you can see, I'm, I'm not too bad. I've knocked most of them off. They're all off on the block. But every now and then, I forget and we get that bit. So that's not going to affect the airflow, you see, on the um, in between the brickwork and the insulation. But if we had full fill cavity insulation, it would be a different matter. So anyway, there are those numbers. And that's one of the reasons why we've gone for this 50mm Kingspan Thermoboard. And it just meets the current regulations in terms of insulation. But this stuff has been engineered now to uh, be extremely good at insulating buildings and that in, um, used alongside, should I say, the um, Thermalite Thermashield block work, which is what these ones are. The block work also acts as an insulator as well, so you get a double whammy from both the insulation on the outside of the building, or in the cavity, should I say, and the block work on the inside and then of course they also take into account the brickwork that you're using and the plasterboard and everything else to get you down to that 0.18 value so there we go a little bit of an insight as to what where and why we're doing what we're doing but the sun is absolutely beaming down on me on this lovely friday afternoon so i think what i'm going to do is continue to enjoy my pint I hope you're going to do the same, and we'll see you on the next video. Cheers. Oh, isn't she lovely?